Hey Budget Gardeners, Vita Loca here. Join me today as I show you how to deadhead and prune your daylily plant. So let's go. Before I begin, you might be wondering what are some of the plants around me. This beautiful purple colored plant is a clematis or a clematis, which I really love. And next year it definitely needs to be staked up on some sort of a trellis. But nevertheless, it's adding a very pretty purple color in this bed. And then around me over here, as well as behind me, the red colored plant, that is bee balm. And the hummingbirds absolutely love that plant, but not only the hummingbirds, I find a lot of butterflies on there as well. Now let's talk about this plant, shall we? This is a daylily. And I wanted to talk a little bit about the process for deadheading daylilies, why we deadhead them, and which daylilies to deadhead, and then finally how to prune them. Some people, including myself, I will admit, have a love-hate relationship when it comes to daylilies. And I think part of the reason is because the flower is very short-lived. The name daylily is basically true to the name of the flower. The flower blooms for one day, and then after that, the flower goes by and it doesn't look so pretty. When it comes to different types of daylilies, there are lots of different colors, different heights. The biggest thing that I want to tell you about is that there are some varieties that are called reblooming daylilies. This variety right here is the Stella Dioro daylily or Stella Dioro, however you want to pronounce it. And this daylily specifically is a reblooming daylily. So when you buy a daylily, look on the tag and it will tell you whether or not that daylily will rebloom. And what that means is that if you are very good about deadheading and pruning your daylily plant, then that reblooming daylily will keep blooming for you basically throughout the season until your first frost. Typically, the best show will be the initial blooms. And then after that, the reblooming daylily will still put out a few blooms here and there throughout the season just to give you some additional color in your landscape, which in this case would be this beautiful yellow color. It really depends on the year. I can tell you that this year I have not been that good about going around and deadheading my daylilies, but do not fear. It is going to happen, and that's why I'm making this video to show you how to do it and to motivate me to get going on deadheading my daylilies. In case you're wondering why should you deadhead your daylily, well, if it's a reblooming daylily, that tells the plant to keep blooming. And if you don't deadhead a reblooming daylily, that tells the plant to stop blooming and put all its energy into going to seed. But if you have a daylily that's not a rebloomer, you should still be good about taking care of it and deadheading it because you want the plant to still look pretty. And also you want the plant to put all its energy into the roots for next year's plant. One of the biggest questions that I've gotten in the past is, well, how can you tell the difference between what is a flower bud and what is a seed pod? And I wanna show you the difference today, just so you know what to look for. See this beautiful blossom? It's blooming today, which means tomorrow, this will go by and this blossom will look more like this. This over here was something that probably bloomed yesterday or the day before, and today needs to be removed. When I remove a spent blossom like this, I follow it all the way down, and I wanna make sure I'm not only getting the blossom that's gone by, but I'm also getting what's behind it, which that is where the seed pod gets produced. So you want to make sure you're getting the whole thing. You're not just pulling it off, but you're pulling off what's behind it as well. These right here, these are examples of flower buds. This one will bloom next, and then after a few days, these little guys will bloom. The strappy stuff, these are the leaves, but these blossoms, these are coming off of not the leaves, but what are called scapes. Part of cleaning your daylily plant is removing the scapes that no longer have any blooms on them and that no longer have any buds on them. We don't want to remove these scapes because they still have time. They're still going to be blooming at some point later on. But see this guy right over here? Notice there are no buds on there and there are no blooms on there. At this point, you can follow the scape all the way down and cut it as far as you can go down near the base. And that's what a scape looks like when there are no buds and there are no blooms left on it. Right in here, this is an example of a seed pod. We definitely want to remove that because at this point, it's just taking energy away from the plant. I'm following it all the way down and I'm removing the scape 
And that's what the seed pod looks like. And if I was to keep it on the plant, it would basically eventually create seeds for me. But I'm not trying to collect the seeds at this point. And that's an example of a daylily scape that has a seed pod on it that we've now removed. Here's another seed pod that needs to get removed. And since there are no more buds on there, no more blooms, I'll need to remove the entire scape. And there's another one behind it. And there's one right there. And there's another one right there. So again, here's an example of a flower bud that's going to bloom in a day or two. And here is a blossom that has spent and has gone by. If I was to just pull it off like this, I have the spent blossom, but I don't have the ovary at the end. I left it behind, and what will happen is that can produce a seed pod, and I don't want that. So I'm going to remove that as well. The next thing I want to show you is basically at the base of the plant. Another complaint people have when it comes to any daylily, reblooming or not, is the strappy leaves and how unsightly the plant looks as the summer or season progresses. Well, that's all part of maintenance. What you need to do is come in and just pull off any leaves that look like they've gone by, that are browning or that are even yellowing. So I can just come right in and tug and pull off any leaves that I don't want. And there you have it. Is it a maintenance chore? Absolutely, but isn't that part of gardening? I think that's what makes gardening fun and that's how we all learn from each other. That's why I wanted to make this video was to just show you the basics involved when it comes to taking care of your daylilies so that you can continue to love them and maybe not have a love-hate relationship with them after all. They just need a little bit of TLC, but trust me, it will be worth it in the end. In case you're wondering how to divide a daylily, I did make a video showing the process. I'll be sure to put a link to that down in the description below. If you have any questions or comments, I'd love to hear from you. And until the next video, make it a great day with gardening.